Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. I have moved to the dark side and got myself my very first processor. It's the Marantz AV7706, and we're gonna check it out right after the jump. And I am back. Now, before I begin, I wanna give a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so very much for directly contributing to the channel and supporting everything I'm doing here on YouTube. I truly appreciate it. Now, if you would like to be one of these elite you know, folks on the screen you see here, make sure to click the link down in the description and become a patron today. Okay, so I got the Marantz AV7706 from Dream Media Home Theater. So big shout out to the team over there for sending this over for me to review. Thank you guys so much. And let's get upstairs, take it out of the box and just run through a quick overview of what it has to offer. The AV7706 comes in at $3,000 and is an AV processor, which means I will need to externally power all of my speakers. I already have two five channel amplifiers for a total of 10 speakers. They are the Parasound A51 for the ear level speakers and the Parasound A52 plus for the height channels. And yes, I have five high channels, the regular standard four for Dolby Atmos and the Voice of God channel for Oro 3D. Now in the box, we get the usual suspects, remote control, batteries, two prong IEC power cable, Odyssey calibration microphone, quick start guide, cardboard tripod, Bluetooth antennas, and the AM FM antennas. And of course the AV7706 itself. On the front, we have the classic Marantz look with the porthole, which I absolutely despise. I do not like this look at all. I know there's a whole bunch of Marantz fans that are, you know, getting ready on their keyboards to start vilifying me in the comments, but no, I, I just don't like it. I, it's too small. I need a bigger display and it, I just have, have to now hit info to see, you know, whatever. Anyway. I don't like it, but it's there. For those of you that like it, hey, cool, right on. On the left, we have a power button and input selector knob. And opposite that on the right, we have the volume knob. In the middle, we have that beautiful porthole. <laughs> and below we have a door that hides a larger display along with buttons for specific functions like pure direct, dynamic EQ, dynamic volume, zone two and three controls, just to name a few. You'll also find the auxiliary inputs, headphone jack, USB, and calibration mic input. I'm sure most of you are interested on what's around the back, so let's turn this bad boy around. Along the bottom, we have 13 XLR outputs, 11 speaker outputs, and two XLR outputs for subwoofers. If you don't know what XLR connections are or how to connect multiple amplifiers, I made a video outlining that exact topic using the AV7706, and I'll link that down below and with a card up top. On the left of the XLR outputs, we have the AM and FM antenna connections. Just above the XLRs, we have a host of RCA connections. This will include five analog inputs plus a phono input. There's also a 7.1 analog input, which is used for something like a 7.1 output from an Oppo or a Panasonic Blu-ray player. And this is used if you want to you know, utilize the internal DACs on those devices, if you think those DACs are better than you know, what's going on in the Marantz itself. So if you're using HDMI connections from your Blu-ray player to the Pre-Pro, then you, don't, you won't be needing this at all but it's there, so yay. And then we have the pre-outs for zone two and three and the main 11.2 speaker pre-outs. To the far right, we have the power port. On the next level up, we have a section for component and composite video inputs and outputs, also known as the legacy video IO. There's a remote in and out, IR input, RS-232 connection, and two trigger outputs on the left. Moving up to the top and final row, from left to right, we have a Bluetooth antenna, assignable digital audio inputs consisting of two coaxial and two optical inputs, ethernet port, six 4K HDMI inputs, one 8K HDMI input, 
three HDMI outputs. The one in the middle is your main HDMI output, which also is your eARC port. And on the far right, we have the other Bluetooth antenna. All right, so that's what the pre-pro looks like. And again, there are no amplifiers in this unit. And that's why there's all those XLR connections at the bottom where you would normally see binding posts for speakers. Also, the unit itself is actually pretty light because there's no amplifier section in there. So that's cool too. I would imagine if you are in a room that is very hot or AV receivers tend to get hot, I would imagine this probably doesn't get as hot because again, there's no amplifiers inside it. All right, let's jump into the setup wizard because there's a couple things that are different that I noticed and I thought that were very, very interesting. So yeah, let's get into that. So going through the setup wizard, everything seems normal until we get to this part here. We have to select RCA or XLR for your speaker outputs. Now you'll notice this says, which one are we using for the front outputs? So this is going to be for your left and right. Since I'm using XLR, I'm gonna select XLR. Do you have a center speaker? Yes. What output am I using? XLR. Then it shows you where to plug it in. Do I have surround speakers? Yes. And yes, I'm using XLR. Now you're probably like, okay, Techno Dad, whatever, you know, but this just goes to show you how flexible this Marantz is because if you're using a more expensive amplifier for your front stage, you can use XLR. If you're using a less expensive, you know, like an Emotiva Bass X for your surrounds and or your high channels, you can set those to RCA. Here we can see 10 channels of Oro 3D with the top surround speaker using the Supple for two preamp output. For me, in my setup, I need to go with the bottom selection here, five height speakers. And for this, yes, my speakers are actually placed in the surround height position. However, I need to select front height and rear height because if I select surround height, I will only get two high channels for Dolby Atmos. And since I want to have the quote unquote, all for one speaker layout or speaker setup so I can run DTSX, Dolby Atmos, Oro 3D, IMAX Enhanced, I wanna make sure that's set to front and rear height. And again, with the height speakers, we are going to go XLR. But like I said, you know, you do have flexibility here, so you don't have to buy super expensive amplifiers with this preamp processor. And tops around, yes, I'm going XLR. Now, here's the one thing I'm going RCA with, and that is the subwoofer, because my subwoofer doesn't have XLR inputs, so I'm gonna select RCA for the subwoofer. But that's it for the speaker setup. I just wanted to show you guys exactly how flexible this AV preamp is. So that's totally different and definitely cool that the Marantz does go ahead and kind of show you how to connect everything up. And then you do get that flexibility of using XLRs for certain speakers and RCA outputs for others. Again, like I said, if you have an expensive three channel, you know, amplifier for the front stage, you can run those XLR. And if you have something a little bit less expensive, like, you know, sometimes you have to skimp out on a few things and you know you went with an amplifier that only had rca inputs like the new uh, base x line from emotiva and if you were running your surrounds and your high channels off of that you can run those all on rca and just like me my subwoofers don't have an xlr input so i switch it over to rca so very cool and a lot of flexibility with the 7706. now one of the other things i did notice that wasn't too flexible was in the amp assigned screen. Now, normally I show you guys how to set up Dolby Atmos and all that kind of stuff, because usually there's a lot of different amp assigns and configurations that you can run on AV receivers. If you saw my video about the Denon X6700H, there were tons of different, you know, configurations you can run. However, with this Marantz, there's pretty much only three. So let's jump over and check that out. Now it defaulted to 11.1, .1, which is the first, which we're gonna talk about. And this is what I would be using because I have a 5.1.4 Dolby Atmos DTSX IMAX Enhanced setup and a 10.1 Oro 3D setup. So I need to keep everything on 11.1. .1. The next we have a 9.1 with a bi-amp, 
So for those that like to buy amp their front speakers, this is for you. And the third one is 9.1 plus a front B. So if you have two sets of speakers, like let's say you have two for home theater listening and then two for two channel listening, then you can select either one at whatever given moment you want. So in essence, there isn't much flexibility here, which only tells me one thing. Yeah, you're not gonna buy this and only have a 5.1 or a 7.1 or even a 9.1, you're gonna have to like buy this because you have an 11 channel setup, you know, for me it's 10, but whatever. I don't think this has all those other options that the AVRs have due to the fact that this is a preamp processor, it's $3,000, so I'm sure they're assuming you have a pretty big setup. You know, it's not gonna be just the very, very minimum setup, it's gonna be a setup that is gonna be, I guess, at least nine speakers, you know? I don't know, maybe, who knows? Bottom line is, there's some good flexibility with choosing what type of outputs you can use for your amplifiers. And then when you get into the amp assign screen, it's fixed to kind of like three basic configurations, which you can customize uh, to your liking. So there you have it. Quick overview. I will be running the standard Odyssey. What is it? XT32. Then we're going to be getting into the Odyssey Multi-Q X. Uh, once Joe and Tell and I have some time to dial in the system and I cannot wait for that because that is going to be awesome. You guys have heard me talking about Joe's Magic Beans settings for Odyssey and if you have a Denon or Marantz AVR or Pre-Pro, if, if it uses the app and you pay that $200 to get the additional Multi-QX, then... I would highly recommend getting Joe to remotely uh, dial in your system. Uh, you will need a few other things. Make sure you contact him and you know set up a consultation because it is you know a long process depending on how big your system is. So I'll have a link down in the description for Joe's consultation. Uh, definitely, if you want to take your home theater to the next level, if you think you got it, like down you got your speakers you got a theater room you got your room treatments and you want to get that little bit extra whew, you're going to want to do this once again thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe thank you to my patrons on patreon and thank you dream media for sending the 7706 for me to review who knows i might keep it once i you know plug this sucker in and check it out we'll see we'll see on that note we'll see you next time Peace.